There's no time like the present, so I guess this must be the time. Welcome everybody to the service today, and those of you who are watching, we do have it in line, right? Those of you who are watching online, thank you for joining us this morning. So we're glad that you're with us also. So it is a great Sunday. It's Christ the King Sunday, which uh, is one of the one of the higher points of the year, I guess, where we celebrate. Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior and King, and that's a, we'll talk a little bit about that kingship later. But anyhow, welcome everybody. Now I got to go through this. You know, I'm kind of new around here, and <laughs> it says here in this suggested order of worship, which we'll probably change today. <laughs> I have a problem with this order of worship, but that's okay. That's my problem, not yours. You know, I've been in so many different denominations and things that it just Anyhow, that's my problem, not yours. Huh? It says here, welcome to, we extend a warm welcome to all of you who came, we did that. We had the prelude, have we had the prelude already? That was the prelude, okay. See? <laughs> now it says that we have somebody who wants to talk to us. Announcements. What have we got? Besides the funeral ones. Yeah. Including. So for some of you who are looking for a Christmas concert. I, there aren't that many options around here, but we there's a community chorale that's putting on uh, two Christmas concerts this next weekend. So if you're looking for something to get you off in the Christmas spirit, it's at Bethany Lutheran Church in Siren at 7 o'clock on Saturday night and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's led by Jim Moose, who was the former choir director in Webster, of course, in high school. And he's, he does a great job. And, and you don't want to they're always great events. That they are. Um, after giving thanks on Thursday, we now look forward to the Advent season, a time of anticipation of our Savior's birth. It is also a time of giving. You may have noticed the tree in the narthex heralding Christmas for kids. If you see Alta Bauer, please thank her. She offered us over 50 homemade hats for our Christmas tree. <laughs> so they'll be taken down when we turn it in and given to the kids in the county. So um, today's the last day of giving Christmas for Kids for Mission of the Month. Um, please, there are extra envelopes out in the narthex if you need one. Um, but on December 6th, we'd like to gather for a potluck luncheon at noon and share our best recipes with all. Join us for food, fun, and fellowship, and a final opportunity to help the kids in Burnett County have a Merry Christmas. If you prefer, you can bring an unwrapped gift if you'd prefer buying that doll or that truck, or you can bring an unwrapped gift and it'll It'll all be collected and brought in that day as we prepare to give our offering to interfaith caregivers. So they can fill their lists and arrange pickup for the parents to, to help with a Merry Christmas. A sign-up sheet will be in the narthex to check off your potluck food. If you don't cook, come anyway. There's a lot of cooks in this congregation. Everyone is invited. Wednesday, December 6th at noon in Fellowship Hall. Been a long time since we could gather that way. Any questions, you can ask Donna Devick or myself. Hope to see you there. Good morning. Morning. <laughs> um, uh, in the on the bulletin board in the narthex is a sign up. We are doing a special poinsettia project for the church. We would like to start out with just maybe three or four plants in front of the altar, and then by the end of the project, we're going to have as many as we can get up here. And these, this project will be for you to remember. You can um, choose whether it's in memory of someone you've lost, or some anniversary, or a birth in your family. 
think about um, giving that $13.50 to the church in a very different way this Christmas. And I'm also getting a plea out there for new members for the um, guild, the altar guild. We could, we could use some new, new faces, either singles or couples, and um, it could be men or women, and uh, just give me a call. Um, my number is in the directory. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everybody. We um, missed something in the bulletin. Um, Salvation Army has asked for bell ringers. I'm sure that's a need every year. And then I ran into Sue uh, ringing at the grocery store on Friday morning, reminded me to, um, uh, if anybody is interested in doing that, I'm sure, first of all, there's somebody over here who knows something about that. Um, weren't you in charge of the whole Bur Burnett County? Yeah, Salvation Burnett Army? County yeah. and so Juneau County when I was there, yeah. Yeah, he might be able to help you a little, but Sue also does this every year, and she's happy to help people get signed up or whatever. Also, we're going to slowly start to uh, reclaim some practice from pre-pandemic time. In, so in consultation with the worship committee, we're going to every Sunday communion by intinction. First of all, uh, there are good theological reasons for doing that every week. Uh, we're made right with one another and with God. And remember our All Saints Remembrance Day, uh, we dine with the saints. So when we commune, I think about many of the people um, who are already in heaven. So e every time we commune, we're dining with the saints. And also the saints in Europe and in Africa and everywhere around the world. So it seems at first like that might be sort of burdensome for our volunteers, our shepherding group, but we only need two people instead of five or whatever it has been, two people every week instead of you know 10 over the course of the month. And also it's just gonna be so much easier for our altar guild, because think about filling up all those little teeny cups and then washing all those teeny little cups. So it's just gonna be um, a lot easier the bulletin is gonna be easier, so many things. Um, and then also communion is super important to some who worship. Um, it's not really church without communion for some people and they will knock themselves out to come on a communion Sunday maybe and not so much um, the other time. And then finally, if you have questions or issues with this, like if you're super mad right now, um, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, the steam is now coming out of your ears. Come and talk to me, because I kind of enjoy that. Um, <laughs> and what you should not do He's is... lying! <laughs> <laughs> and, and seriously, what you should not do is circle the wagons and shoot inside. <laughs> what they call about Christians, they shoot their own wounded. <laughs> the Salvation Army bell ringing. I've been ringing bells with the Salvation Army since I was probably eight years old and now I'm 80, so you do the math. Uh, and uh, one year I was working at Sears Roebuck and Company in Appleton and on my lunch hour I would go to Prangy's because we didn't have a bell from the Salvation Army in front of our Sears store. So I'd go during my lunch hour and I'd ring bells. And the store manager of, of Sears got this irate woman who came in and just chewed him out. And he said, what's, what's the matter? You fired that good Steve Ward, and now he has to ring bells for the Salvation Army. <laughs> That's just one of many stories, but anyway, you, you will find that you get far more from ringing bells, and, and, and you find out how generous and loving people are. So. And if, if it's like it used to be, because remember, used to be doesn't always be now, but it's... It, you, we had it at Wayne's, and well, we also had it up at Log Cabin, so I don't know what they have now, but I know Wayne's has a bell, and I know if there's nobody there when you go to ring, you just go in the office, go back by the general office, and they have the kettle there, and you can, if nobody's there, you can take it back to them. So anyhow, that's, uh, that's that. So I think we have a call to worship, yes? You're waving. Thank you. 
that song when the Lenny Wolf Trio wrote it back in the 60s, I think. They had a, a second verse to that. There's a holy hush around us as God's Spirit fills this place. I can feel the touch of you and God's Spirit touch upon my face. And I see the holiness on your face. It's a wonderful song. Thank you. Confession and forgiveness. Stand up as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and to whom, from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. May that we may peace perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. Help us to turn from our sins. Turn us again to you and uphold us that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Remain standing. Oh, remain standing as we sing this song. It's a great one. Adon, O King Eternal. Well, if you want to sit down, go ahead, sit down. Go ahead, sit down. I, we're going to play Jack in the Box. When I say stand, you stand. When I say sit, please sit. Please sit. <laughs> I told you. Adon, O King Eternal, the day of March has come. Henceforth in fields of conquest, your tent will be our home. Through days of preparation, your grace has made us strong. And now, O King Eternal, we lift our battle song. Lead on, O King Eternal, till some fierce war shall cease, and holiness shall whisper the sweet amen of peace. For not with swords like clashing, nor war of stirring drums, but deeds of love and mercy, the heavenly kingdom comes. We thy O King eternal, we follow not with fears. For gladness breaks like morning when her my face appears. Your cross is lifted over us, a journey in its life. The crown awaits the conquest, lead on, O oh God of might. <laughs> Thinkers, you stood up. Please be seated. <laughs> Please be seated. No, no. no? We, don't, we don't sit here either? No. 
You just do something and I'll follow. <laughs> we are at the greetings. I had a pastor one time in the United Methodist Church of Appleton, Wisconsin, who refused to sing any fight songs. Any songs with battle or fight. And anyhow, that interest thinks it's not a battle here. But I'm, I hate to tell him we really are in a battle. Grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God of power and might, your Son shows us the way to service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right, and the strength to serve the world you have made through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Pretend you like each other. <laughs> There's some COVID going around, so you may just want to bump elbows or... That's a pretty blue. Annette Dahl, how you doing? I'm doing great. Good, Thank good. You. Peace be with you, brother. Good morning. Peace good morning. Good morning. God bless you. You live the closest, so you're usually about the latest to get in. I know that's right. That's how it works. Always. Peace. <laughs> Peace be with you. Julie and Jay came home. Uh, did they? Yeah, I wasn't sure when. They're in the, their car's in the driveway. All right. Be with you. Peace, Peace baby. Get over here, you <laughs> Please. They think I got to get up there. You know, they never. I'll get you guys later. <laughs> Russian old guy, like. I know the way back here yet. Want me to have a solo?
remember. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you, and getting to like you. I'm hoping you guys see. <laughs> Haven't you noticed? Suddenly I'm right in breezy, quite breezy, because of all the wonderful and new things I'm learning about you day by day. And I mean that, folks. This is getting to be fun. Even though I don't know the order of worship yet, you're going to have to do a lot of training on me. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Do I know you? Da, 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 da. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. <laughs> oh, give the old guy some time. Yeah. You ready up there, buddy? I'm ready. Any time. Go for it. All right. <laughs> the first reading for this morning is from Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 11 through 16 and 20 through 24. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on the rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will, set them up over the, I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for this morning, please read responsibly. It's Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence, thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to the of For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your hand are caravans, the heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship. Bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you. 
gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people from one another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right, and the goats on his left. Then the king shall say to those on his right hand, Come, you are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you in the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous shall answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or gave you food, or thirsty, or gave you something to drink? And when was it we saw you as a stranger, and welcomed you, or naked, and gave you clothing? When was it that we saw you sick, or in prison, and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did this for one of the least of those who are members of my family, you did it to me. And then he will say to those on his left, You that are accursed, accursed depart from me into the eternal, eternal, eternal prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit. And then they will answer, Lord, when was that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do that to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And this, those will go away into the eternal punishment, but the righteous eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. I just leave you alone. You know the drill up, down, up, down. You've got a lot of training to do on me. You know that? Well, you do know that this is the end of the Christian year cycle, right? Next Sunday, I saw you celebrate on Saturday night. That's the New Year starts on next Sunday. We go from. This is just more than you want to know. You go in the lectionary from year A to year B, and there's year A, B, and C. And the lectionary is simply a cycle which helps those of us who prepare things in the church to go through the Bible every three years, all the major points of the Bible. So if you come to church every Sunday, and you listen to the three readings plus the hymn, but the, but the hymns are not part of the readings. I mean, they're part of the readings, but they're really the music of the church. The hymns... Hymns are the songs of the church, but, but then you will have heard the main points of the Bible every three years. So pastors, you know, every three years we preach the same series of the sermons, so we get pretty good after ten years. <laughs> so, and it helps with the organists, and it helps with the liturgists, because they're all, there's a, there's a series. And Pope John the 23rd, which was just a great, great pope in the, in the Catholic Church. He got 70 scholars together back in the 60s and had them make out this cycle, this lectionary cycle. So we, and, so, and then as the Catholics do things once in a while, after a few years, the, the Protestants said, they don't really match. Those readings don't really match. So the Protestants went to the revised standard version. So, so we revised it a little but the Catholics are still back. And that, I'm not knocking the Catholics. Don't, don't go out and say, you know, Pastor C said, those dumb Catholics, they don't change. We all change. <laughs> it's just the only thing constant change in our world. But anyhow, so now you know next Sunday we'll start the new year. But this Sunday we celebrate the Christ, the, you know, Christ the King. And Christ the King is telling us that I don't know about you, but there's a lot of different kind of leaders in countries. And I'm not saying what's good and what's bad, because that's not my, jo that's not my job. As, as a Christian, it's my job to recognize one king <laughs> and recognize one rule. And so consequently, but, you know, there, some countries is like kings and queens, and some countries vote. 
And we all love our choices, always. That's the that's thing about it. But you have to, all countries pick some person who is going to be their leader. And so as Christians, we have to decide who's our leader? Who's our king? Do we have a king? Do we have anybody who we say is completely in control of us? You know, in Jesus' time, you know, Herod was king, the Jewish king. But Herod didn't have the power to kill Jesus. He had the power to beat him and do all these other things. But Caesar had the power. Pilate had. And so Pilate at one time said to him, you probably remember that. I probably don't even have to tell you about him in John. In John, he goes before Pilate. Now, these readings we have today, we're still in Wednesday. Remember, a couple of weeks ago, I was here and I said, we were, this is the Wednesday before the Friday, you know, before the Thursday. So we're still in, we've dialed along in this series of this Matthew now for three different readings about Christ's King, about the end times coming. Remember I warned you all at our age what was coming? But anyhow, we won't go there to that. Some of you weren't here. So in, in John, Pilate summoned Jesus and he says, are you the king of the Jews? That's what he asked Jesus. Are you the, am I the king? And then he said, is that you, Jesus said? Or did others tell you about me? And I'm a Jew, said Pilate, replied, that you people and your chief priests who handed over me says you are. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Didn't say he wasn't a king. My kingdom is not of this world. My servants will fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. The right saying I'm a king. In fact, for this reason, I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify the world to the truth. What is truth? Well, I'm not going to go to that movie about you can't handle the truth. You all remember that movie. But the truth is that Jesus Christ is our king. And if we say he's our king, then it means he has control of our lives that our whole life should be centered around his kingship and his kingdom. Because we are all trying to gain eternal life. We are brothers and sisters in Christ, and as brothers and sisters in Christ, we're a brother and a sister to Christ. We are part of God's family. That's the important part of these passages that we've been reading for the last three weeks. We have to decide who's our king. I love C.S. Lewis. He wrote a book called The Screwtape Letters. How many of you read this? One, two, three. And it's, it, C.S. Lewis understands that so many Christians are on the line. We're all we, we, we want to be, be Christ-like, and we want to be like Jesus, but we're not sure we want to fully commit. So C.S. Lewis writes this series of letters. He finally published them all together, and it's about Satan and a guy named Wormwood. I think it's Wormwood was this chief. And, and he's saying, he's telling Wormwood how you, they can get Christians not to commit to Christ. Wishy, those are on the right or on the left, and can't quite decide. And at one point, Wormwood says, Let's just tell them there is no God. He says, No, 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 don't do that. <laughs> They'll make a decision then. Just tell them there is a God, but you've got all the time in the world to decide whether you want to serve him or not. He says, You've got a lament, and then all of a sudden, life is over, and you don't have a chance. So that's if you get a chance, that's a great little book, through table. But anyhow, so here we are. We have to decide, are we goats? Are we sheep? Now I know, I know in sports, 
quote is greatest of all time. <laughs> but I don't think I've got that yet. But anyhow, we are we're in an interesting time when you stop and look at times. An interesting time in that you've, we've studied, you've studied, you had the pastors come three weeks in a row now, and I told you three weeks ago, you know, that this is a very important chapter, this 25th chapter. It's probably as important as any chapter in the Bible, because it makes us stop to think about what the future holds for us. Remember, three weeks ago, I couldn't fig figure out whether bridesmaids or virgins, but anyhow, here or there, it made no difference. They were, they were ten women, right? Ten lamps, remember that? And five of the bridesmaids or the virgins just weren't ready. They, they didn't pay attention, and, and all of a sudden, Danny, like when I sang Give Me a Well in My Lamp, he said, I was hoping you were going to sing that. But it was all about being ready, because the Lord is coming. The King is coming. The King is coming. The King is coming. Praise God, he's coming. Anyhow, that's a one. You've got to forgive me. I, I got too many songs up. I, if I could just get rid of some of this nonsense, I could. <laughs> so that was all about that. And then last week, you got this message about the vineyard owner, right? He gives one, gives one talent. So he's leaving and he goes away. He gives one talent. He gives two talents. He gives ten, five talents, right? And uh, and we have this problem. We, being all of us, is we take what Jesus, what the Bible says, is as the truth. Is it? You know. But we don't remember that it's parables. We don't remember that it isn't exactly what it appears to be. He's got an other alternative. So one guy, no, I didn't preach last Sunday, but I was there to hear it. And one guy came up to me after, he says, well, God should have known that that one with only one talent was not smart enough to do anything with it. He got what he deserved. Well, I suppose one could look at it that way if we're talking about talents being a large amount of money, a huge amount of money, but if we look at it as gifts of the Spirit. I love gifts. Someday, not too far away, but it'll be at least five months as I'm getting out of Dodge. Uh, <laughs> Danny, Danny leaves, I leave right after. If we look at it as every one of us has a gift that God has given us. And the one talent person was given one talent, but it didn't mean it was not an important talent. It did not mean that the one person was not of worth in our congregation. You may be someone who's given the gift of hospitality. I don't want to redo that sermon because I don't know what he said last week. Anyhow, <laughs> but that is an important gift. You know, the church is a body, a moving of different parts, but one who can't say to this and they get, but they're all important. And if the one gift you're given is hospitality, and you use it to, your, to God's advantage, the person who stands in the back of the church and greets us in the morning, well, that's just being a greeter. No, it is. Yeah, it is, but it's not. <laughs> there are some people who go places and, <laughs> and, and you know, people never notice them. It's as if they're just a blip, you know. But you get a greeter who greets people and lets them know how much, how pleased we are to see, how happy we are that they've come. That is a tremendous gift. A tremendous gift. My wife had the gift of hospitality, and man, <laughs> anybody ever knew her that that was truly a gift? But it wasn't a lesser gift. 
So I get the gift of preaching. That isn't a great gift. I mean, it's a gift, but it's a gift. And every gift, and some people have more than one gift. I've done spiritual gift work, and we'll do a spiritual gift worship if, if you don't need me anymore. I'm, but I, I'm kind of crazy. You don't get rid of me very easy. <laughs> but anyhow, I just love spiritual gifts. And the one that got two, you know, he doubled it. The one that got one, he didn't, he didn't get it taken away because he, he had it taken away because he didn't use it. God gives you a gift. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention the person's name, but I'm going to mention the name simply because a lot of you know her, and I know she'll let me do it. <laughs> he had a gal named Patsy Pope. And I know, I know many of you people know Pat, Patsy when she was in jail when I first met her. But she came to our church in Siren, the Methodist Church in Siren, and I said, and her daughter was going to Russia to adopt children, I says, how about we make you a missionary? Ah, oh, Pastor, I'm not a missionary. I couldn't do a thing like that. I says, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take a collection. And at that point, the Methodist Church was giving two, three thousand dollars, I, you know, maybe five thousand dollars a year to. We're new. They hadn't quite got the idea yet that church is supposed to. Anyhow. So I said, we'll just take a collection, and whatever the money is, you take it with you, and if you see a need in Russia, use it. Just donate it to them. Oh, I could do that. Long story short, she took about $6,000, and when she was in Russia, she found this ministry that was for men, alcoholic men, recovering. And she said, what is your greatest need? And he said, food. We don't have money for food. So she bought him six months worth of food in Russia. And she came back so excited. Fast forward about five or six years, and we were given $27,000 a year to mission. That's what happens when one person who doesn't even think she has a gift, all of a sudden finds it. Uses it. Wow. What an God has a way of blessing use gifts gifts who don't hide them and so and then and, and I was talking about you know all these passages are about serving all these passages about recognizing Jesus Savior being our king so this passage today again is is the last in well in the 18th chapter the chapter is gone I've got to get out of John and get back into Matthew. 20. These passages are all about when the Son of Man comes in his glory. You see how he's coming now? We're talking about the final time that Christ came. You remember the first time he came? We'll celebrate that four weeks after we start Advent next week. He came in a pretty quiet little way, didn't he? A little barn... <laughs> Little, they say a cave. I think most people have decided it was, and some miraculous things happened, but only a few people saw it. It was not a, it was not an event that was well known throughout the universe of the world. This next coming is going to be a whole different story. It's going to be a whole different story. Oh, and the Sunday before this Wednesday that we're talking about here. He came into Jerusalem on a donkey. What conquering person comes in on a donkey? But here he comes, he's showing us. And people are excited. They're throwing the palms on the ground and they're saying, save us now, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us now, save us now. He comes as a conquering king. Different kind of kingdom. So this coming, what he's talking about here, is going to be that great, we sing in, in <laughs> there's an Irish show, Great Come and Get It Day, you know. I think it's Brigadoon, but anyway. When the, king, the Son of Man, he likes to call himself the Son of Man. He's the Son of God, but he is also the Son of Man. That's his favorite 
word for himself. In his glory, with all of his angels with him, he will sit on the throne. The king on the throne. Have his and all the nations will gather. Did you catch that? Did it go right over your heads? All the nations. He's not just going to be seen in Jerusalem. All the nations will see this magnificent sight of his return with his angels. Wow. They will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people from the, one another as the shepherd separates the goats from the sheep. The sheep will be on his right, and the goats will be on his left. He's not coming to judge anymore. He already knows who's going. They've made their decision. I always say Jesus never sent anybody to hell. He just confirmed their choices. Think about that. I'll on that one a little while. And when the king will say to those on his right, Come, you were blessed by my father. Take my inheritance, the kingdom, prepared for you from the creation of the world. Wow. This kingdom prepared for those recognized love and other. Not just him, because he goes on to talk about it. who will make it and who won't. The king will say to those whom I was right, be blessed. For I have, was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to me and visited me. And then the righteous will say to him, When did we do those things? And he said, Whenever you did it, one of the least. One of the reasons, I retired a lot of times. This thing about retirement, I don't do it very well. I fail. One of the reasons I went to Yellow Lake Lutheran Church, because Pastor Doug, I would go to pick up food for some of my friends and some of the elderly people. And he would, for a couple of years, he'd say, you know, Pastor Steve, have you ever thought about joining our, because I knew about it, like, I knew there were a bunch of hope. <laughs> Did you ever think about joining us one Sunday a month? And I said, you know, Pastor Doug, at that point in time, I was still working at the Baptist Church. I said, I've got a church that I'm working in now, and I love the people, and I, you know, it's a really, he says, that's kind of why we want you. <laughs> I said, well, thanks for offering, but, you know, I said, I don't think that's going to work, but, yeah, but, but thanks for offering. And then I decided, you know, working four days a month, Thursdays, one day a week, doing visitation, Bible study, I'm going to be 80 this year. I've got to slow down. I can't be working that hard anymore. So I retired. I was the longest serving pastor they ever had there. It was their 12 years. Nuts. But anyhow, so I retired and it was, a, it was time. And then for two weeks I twiddled my thumbs. I thought, you know, that Doug, he kept asking if I would let him serve, preach one Sunday a month. Listen, that's really what I love. <laughs> so I called him up. And uh, I says, is that still an offer? He says, what are you doing for lunch today, Steve? <laughs> and so I went out and had lunch with him, Don. And, and then I said, there's only one thing you got to know. I says, says, what's that? I says, I am not candidating. I am not a person for a candidate. I don't want a full-time job. I don't want, I'm, I'm not, and I am not jumping through hoops. And I says, if you want somebody that loves God and loves people, I'll serve. I says, but... That's it. I just, want to, I just want to love and serve. He says, oh, I think that'll be good. <laughs> and here we are for a year later. But anyhow, but anyhow. So, but what I, one of the things that made me want to serve with Doug and Ella Lake Luthen, as I saw there, I saw you people, any of you, working there. I thought, wow, this is the kind of, and I saw how much supported your faith caregivers. But 
These are the kind of the ones who look after the poor, after those who need help. So here we are. I'm here because of your rich out, outlook. So we just keep doing that together. We'll be doing it. So. And then he will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for the least of these, you did it for me. And then they will go away to eternal punishment and the righteous eternal life. Pretty, pretty, pretty tough teachings. But if reality, we love God and God. You're on the right. Right. Hmm. read the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died. He descended into the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He descended into heaven. He was seated in the right hand of the Father. Um,
prayer time a little different this morning, as you might imagine. I always wondered why we do prayer time, and then the Lord's Prayer is way over on the next page. We're going to do the Lord's Prayer after prayer time this morning. Don't hang me. You got angry things to say, say them to Mary. <laughs> she likes to hear those things. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come this day ever thankful for all the things we have. We've just had Thanksgivings, and Thanksgiving is a day where we center on thanking you for all the blessings we have. We are so thankful to live in a country where we can worship without being people come in and, and capture. I have a missionary in Mexico who, who has a, churches where they'll come in and break in and take one of the people and and hold them ransom until they get the money. There's other countries where it can be death-defying to worship. We thank you for this country allowing us the freedom that we have. We're thankful that we have food supplies. And Lord, there's still people who are hungry and go without. We pray that we would continue to be open to helping and serve them and there's places where they can go for clothes like Lord, we have homes warm, warmed over our heads and a warm place. Help us not to take this off granted. Lord, there, there are so many people that are struggling, not only financially, but struggling with addictions and things that just make it hard, hard make things go. Sometimes we need to be kinder and gentler. With Sometimes we don't know all that others are going through. Help us be mindful of that. And in our prayer concerns of fellowship and worship, Marilyn Anderson and Don Christensen and Clint Erickson and Tom Schneeberg, Faith Schneider, Mark Schneider, Barb Moles, Dorothy Van Eichren, those fighting addiction, people in Christ, deployed military families and leaders, children, areas of conflict throughout the world. Let us remember to celebrate the life of Mike Werner Saturday, December 2nd. Visitation will be 10.30 to 11.30. Service will be 11.30 following a luncheon here. Keep this family in your prayers. Lord, thank you for the shepherd. And so now, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our debts. We forgive those who lead us not to fish, but deliver us from Thine is the power, the power, and the glory forever. Now I come to a time where we thank you for the offerings that you've placed in the, the basket behind the, the font there. And then we thank those uh, who are watching online. If you would be kind enough to send a gift in. We appreciate those gifts too. Let's pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you gathered around your table and shared with your abundant blessings. Number us among those, those that as we gather these gifts from your, our, abundant, our abundance to give your, to your rich blessings. We may feast upon this very self and care all that you make through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Sending song. Oh, 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 
Let all things now living in song of thanksgiving to God our Creator, the triumphant space, who fashioned and made us, protected and stayed us, who made us in the end of our days. field is right outside the doors. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.